So we're in sunny Madrid, we're at the Fuse 2023 event. I'm here with Sid Chenamolu, who is VP of Technology Development at Dish Network. Sid, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, really appreciate your time. Uh, just to set the scene, can you just quickly tell us about your role at Dish Network? Uh, I run the technology and architecture group for Dish, and my responsibility spans end-to-end -end system design and standards and regulatory engineering. So I've been with Dish for almost nine years now. Uh, practically worked on the wireless from the day one. Uh, so that's been a, a, a real uh, journey then, a really interesting journey. One that hardly anybody <laughs> else has really been through. Yep, completely. I mean, one of a kind, I would say. Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, uh, you know, Dish is now offering, offering its service. It, it's still building out its network. How is Dish's open RAN enabled 5G network performing? We are happy with the performance of the network. We continue to optimize it. It's uh, never done as a, any network. The system gets better and better over the day. Uh, do we find problems? Yes, we do. We find them, we fix them, and we move on. Uh, we are very happy with the recent Apple launch, that, which is a testament that the open network is working and performing, same as the traditionals meeting all the KPIs that are expected from one of the most stringent device vendor out there. Uh, I would say that uh, we are expand. We are almost 100 million plus on the Warner coverage nowadays, as of I mean, as of probably yesterday or last week, <laughs> and we continue to expand on every day. We cover from a data perspective more than 240 million, which is 70 percent plus pops in the U.S. Almost 15,000 plus sites are more than that, with a broad coverage in all major cities in the country. And as with everything, the coverage extends, keeps on expanding, service keeps on getting better. So we're happy. So obviously, as you've been through this process of, of designing, building, launching, and now running the network, um, I guess this has given Dish the chance to, to, to be able to, to, to give something back to the industry as well. So in what way has Dish contributed to uh, Open RAN standards and the broader ecosystem uh, to, to the people here? I mean, good question. The last time I was at the TIP Summit, it was not called Fuse, was in 2019. 2019 November to be exact. And at that point, we had just given our 5G RFP. And we were trying to figure out what and how we are going to build. During COVID, within a span of two, three years, we built a nationwide network at scale that everyone thought that we would not be done. The testament that I'm sitting here today with you, that the team together at DIST has built the most fabulous network at the breakneck speed. No one has done that in the world. So I said, that's a big contribution we have proven open RAN works, despite everyone claiming that there's a problem, it may not work, it's not ready for prime time. You hear a lot of qualitative statements, but we have proven every one of them wrong. It works, it's viable. Now that's on the overall ecosystem part of it. Coming back to the standards, we do contribute extensively in open RAN standards. We are definitely are well involved in the working group four for the front hall. We are following all the work that's going on for the massive MIMO. But the real interest for us remains to be on the working group two and three rig side. We really want to go to the next level of what we have done. So quite plugged into there. You know, obviously it's a, a different type of network, but at, at the end of the day, everybody's always focused on, well, you know, the customers. What can the customers get? How do the customers use the service? How are they serviced? So what kind of differentiation can DISH offer in terms of what it can deliver to consumers and enterprises, you know, when compared to you know the, the other companies, the AT and T, Verizon, T-Mobile. <laughs> uh, it's a tricky one, but we are a unique in the sense that we are not a single network. That's what everyone needs to realize. As a, the amazing deal or a collaboration we have with two of the service providers in US, AT and T and T-Mobile, we have access to their footprint also. So as we strategically build our own network our consumers, our customers, are also able to access the networks of the two of the other networks that we have there. So by default, we are three in one. <laughs> so no one has that before. Having said that, the one benefit I would say is that we are able to offer very competitive plans and pricing because of the, the way we have deployed an investment into the automation from the day one, thinking, doing it in the cloud, doing it in a cloud native way more importantly. We're able to bring down the operational expense for the company that means we're able to offer cheaper alternative cost competitive pricing models like we have $25 for Boost Infinite, $60 all every year iPhone. So those no one else can do it, but we're able to do it because our price points to run a network is significantly lower than others.
if I'm hearing that right, the sort of the uh, initial appeal then is on on the price side of things and delivering a service that's equal to the other companies in the, in, we in the space? We deliver equal value or better value, same service, and obviously keep on building on top of that. The beauty of running a programmable network is you can take it to the next level on demand faster than others. So as you mentioned, you know, the, the network is still being uh, rolled out uh, and I think you're, you're starting to uh, build out into some of the the non-urban areas uh, in the US. What can we expect to hear from DISH next about its network, about its services, about its plans for the future? Ah, good question. So we'll continue to expand, no doubt about that, but we are going to be strategic in where we expand. We're going to be very conscious of that fact. It's, it's a data-driven decision on where to expand, not purely just because we have to reach a coverage goal. So we want to make sure that we have the best return for investment on what we do. And uh, we have, like I said, we have two other networks to rely on. So we'll be strategic on where we invest. So that's one part of the network rollout. The second part where we're excited is the, all the innovation that we see on the floor right now, like uh, the you know, innovation on the silicon side, innovation on the software side, now innovation on the machine learning AI side. <laughs> so that's where I think we'll end up going. There are a lot of choices out for there. We are going to be deliberate on the next steps that we take to give the best value for customers. And then just to come back quickly, because you mentioned earlier about the potential of the, the RAN intelligent controller and what that might be able to deliver. Are, are you excited or about what you're seeing in terms of the early application development for, for what can run on, on a RIC? It's still very early days for the RIC and there's maybe not a lot of uh, apps out there, but are, are you seeing some really exciting examples of, of, of what this kind of platform can deliver? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this low-hanging fruit, I would say, energy efficiency like everyone. A dozen application providers are out there who are willing to provide applications to bring down the overall cost of energy. That's definitely low-hanging one. Then we see use cases for load balancing, location services. The list is growing, and we are very happy with the number of new players who are entering the space unexpected, unexpected. Okay, and I guess you know, you're know you ideally placed then to take early advantage of what a, any innovation that comes and to, we to will. the market. And you we will. will. <laughs> okay, well we look forward to that. Sid, thanks very much for joining us, really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me.